So I recently tried out the VN Ensemble Pro and I really liked it. In fact, I'm using it quite a bit. But VSL also makes virtual instruments. So how about them? Are they any good? Let's find out. Hi there, this is Sam with Second Tier Sound. Really nice to see you here. So VSL said, we like your review. How about trying some of our instruments? It doesn't seem like you tried some of our instruments. You wanna try some of our instruments? You wanna try them? Sure, I wanna try them. Okay, we'll send some over. All right, so send something over. Okay, we'll send something over. We send over the Synchron Woodwinds. So they did. <laughs> Let's check them out. And by the way, not sponsored, just reviewing their instruments. So here's the Synchron player. And before we listen to the sounds, I just wanted to show you something I find quite neat. We have three sections here of sounds. And what are they? Well, there are three ways of controlling your sound. And this is very nice. So the first one is the mod wheel. All the dynamic layers are controlled with the mod wheel, except the short notes that are then controlled with the velocity, how hard you hit the keys. The second one, all of them mod wheel, everything, no velocities. And the third one is only velocity. And this is really nice because people prefer to work with the VSTs differently. I prefer the first one, so I'm gonna start with that one. And we have a lot of instruments here and we will listen to all of them. But first, I'm just gonna show you how it works. So we start with the flute and see how quickly this loads. It's already up. And you see we have three columns here. And what is all this? It seems like a lot of key switches. Yes, but they have a really neat system. So the first, section is you you know select a normal ones short notes long notes legato and all that but then each of these sections are controlled even further you can have different kind of staccatos different longs and then even one more so let's just listen to it we have short notes here and if you want that a little bit more agile maybe you want it to run a run then that one's more good for that Let's see, we have then staccato long, so it's a little bit longer. So between those, if you swap. It's a little bit of variety there, very important, but even longer, portato. And then we have portato long, which is even longer. And you see, we have different controls down here. We can actually have a vibrato or not. I love this. So this is without vibrato and with. And then we can control it ourselves with the CC20, which you can change, obviously. So, right. And you will see that all the sections works pretty much the same. But let's listen to long notes, for example. We're going to do regular here with a vibrato. Then we can also add a mercado, which gives a little bit of an attack in the beginning, right? This is kind of nice because you can actually sort of think of a performance patch. You can have both short and long in the same one. And then we have something called Espressivo, which give you a natural arc, so you don't have to work the mod wheel yourself, so. I don't think it's time synced, but I've noticed it works really well if you mix these back and forth, maybe some regular and then Espressivo. Very nice. Okay, let's listen to the legato, and I've selected auto speed, and that means that depending on how fast I play, it will choose a little bit different legato, so I can go. Right. And then I can also have an Espressivo there. And the same where uh, we have this Marcado, so you get a little bit of a short there, which is a really nice combination. And we also have an auto there in case you're playing fast. All 
right. So let's take a look at the dynamic ones too. We have different articulations, and these are really important in order to get more richness, more realism to sounds. So you have a little bit of a sort of an arc, a quick arc. It's a fast attack that goes down a little bit. Yeah, very good for ending notes. And then we have sforzatissimo, which is the same, but just more. It's like a stronger note. Okay, crescendo. And what they've done here is that they have a different times. So you can do, for example, uh, two seconds or three seconds or four seconds. They're not time synced, but you can choose the one that is the most appropriate and you just lift the finger when you feel like it's done. And in even neater, you can have vi with or without vibrato. Very nice. This is not always so easy to do with a mod will and it feels a little bit more natural. So the same thing with the diminuendo then, obviously. And a tip here is to use this a lot, especially in ending notes. You get a really nice natural ending that it's not always so easy to do with a mod wheel. All right, then we have flutters and trills. And then a marcado one, so you get that sharper attack. Different from... All right, and then just your trills. But one thing I really like here is that you have the normal ones. But there is actually a legato built in if you want to, so... You get smoother transitions. Really, really nice there. Okay, then we have repetitions, different speeds, basically. And the difference here is that you can have a ringing one. That means that uh, there's an end note as well. When I lift the finger, there's a note. Yeah, it's kind of nice, makes it a little bit smoother. But if you want it to be exactly the way you thought it, then you can cut it off yourself. You just lift the finger whenever you like it, like that. All right, and then custom, that means you can build your own template, so to speak, which might be nice if you don't use them all, if you prefer it a different way. Okay, so let's take a look at all of the sounds now. Now, I won't play all the articulations for each sound, but I'll just give you a little bit of a sample of what they sound like. So we, here we have the piccolo. The piccolo, I yeah, really think it's really well done. In some libraries, you feel like the piccolo is just a pitched up flute, but this one does sound like a piccolo. Very nice. Then we have the flute one which you listen to. I like the flute. It's not my favorite here. I really don't have any negative to say about these instruments. I really think they all sound good, but this is not the best flute I've heard. I, it's like a little bit of warmth to me, but I'm picky. This is a great flute too. So then we have all the flute, which is if you want that little bit lower mystical sound. So let's see. Very nice. Then we have something I really like. It's sort of an ensemble patch with three flutes. And this is really good because you don't really want to load a bunch of solo flutes together. It doesn't sound good. You want a real ensemble patch when you get that natural facing that you get when the players try to sort of tune with each other. So. The trick here I didn't do is that you actually choose the mod wheel for the expression as well. Now, some purists might say, oh, that's not correct. You get less control. But in a way, when you start out just working, I find that you get more dynamic distance that way. You can be more softer. You can even turn off the note that way. So that's the trick you can try. Now let's try the oboe. Now this is important. The oboe is important. So one of my favorite instruments, it needs to sound good. So let's see if they managed to do that here.
Sounds very nice, actually. Let's try the legato. Obviously, oboes are sort of a preference. Some people want more or less nasal, but in general, I like this one. Um, I do find, though, that I'm picky here, eh? that you do want to add the expression to this one because otherwise I find that the velocity layers here are not that big of a difference. It doesn't happen much until you go to the top here, if you can see. So that's my only nitpick there. But I'm super, super, super picky, and that is because this is a good library that has more detail. Anyway, uh, let's listen to the English horn. The English horn is not my favorite in this library. I don't hate it. It's definitely good, but it's not my favorite the way I think an English horn sounds, but that's a matter of preference. Oboe 3. Again, an important patch to get that natural facing, so we can try some. All right, there we go. Let's try clarinet. This is very important to me. It's very difficult to get the clarinet right, so let's see what this sounds like. All right, let's try. I like that. I like that a lot. Wow, that, that is good. I really like that. That's the way a clarinet should sound. Not a lot of difficult facing problems here. How easy it is to play, the way it sounds, how quickly it loads. That's, that's one of my favorites in this library for sure. Let's try the bass clarinet. Yeah, nice. That's sort of a almost saliva wind sound down there and quite bassy. Sounds very good. Let's try three clarinets. Also an important patch. Let's try long notes here. Nice. Legato. Yeah, good. It's that more ensemble feel to it. Very nice. Bassoon. Also, this is very important. To, it needs to be right. I'm very, very picky about my bassoon, so let's see if they manage here. That's not bad. I'll start the legato a little bit. It's it's good. It's good. I'm I'm very picky about my bassoon, so it gets uh, nine out of ten. This one, or maybe eight. It's not bad at all. It's it's really good. I'm very positive about this library, but uh, if I'm picky, this is not my favorite. It's it's all right. Contra bassoon. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's nice and bassy. It really feels that up. That sounds good. It's not always easy to get that round, beautiful sound. Three bassoons. Yeah, very good. That will add that nice bass. Then they have something I really like here, the Woodwinds Twitty. And that is really important where you have sort of an ensemble patch. Yeah, don't play too many there. You get the church organ. <laughs> kind of cool. But what we can do here is that you can actually add the piccolo. So if we have without it, you know, and add it. Because you don't always want it. Let's try with the short ones here. So for example, without, with. Very nice. Okay, that's an excellent, useful patch. And then divided that into high and low as well. And what's very nice about this is that they have the long notes. But they have runs here, and that's really what's interesting here. And I like this approach. Instead of just having you know the same run on each key, what they've done is that they followed this scale. So if you pick C major here, if you press a key, C major, you get that run. And if you press D, you don't get D major. You get D minor because, or the Dorian scale that is, because that's how it is if you follow the diatonic scale. So let's go all the keys up. So you get all the scales, all the modes, in fact, that follow the diatonic scale you're in. And you can change that to, for example, D flat or D, and it follows that. And now it's a major. So if you don't like it that way, you can go to the other way here. And then you can see all the modes. So now we have all of them are major. And then if you want them to be a mixolydian, you just go and change that. Or perhaps Phrygian. And another thing I like is that if you hold the key down, it continues. So you have a nice note that ends there. But you can also change it to be a performative octave. So I can hold down a note, C, and when I want it to go up, I press the next C. I can also hold that note, so I can... And I can also go down, obviously. It gets me more control on how long the note's going to be in before and after. Really nice. And then they've added something I really like. It's called arpeggios. So you choose if you want them to go up. Start to go up and down, obviously, but you, what you start with. And you can cross. And they go like this, all right? You can also have the release notes, which is very nice. If you listen carefully, if I have the lowest, ends on the low one ends on a high one, right? If you do cut, it's whatever you lift the finger. So a lot of options here. And you see you have some nice arpeggios, so we can change it. For example, we can have a dominant. And so on. This is very nice, very nice performance patch. Easy to get things going. One thing I haven't mentioned, actually, is that they have a timbre adjust here. And this is very useful if you want to change the sound a little bit, but not EQ it too much. It's almost like a dynamic layer, but it changed the quality of the sound a little bit. And you can use these in all the samples. Very, very nice touch. So if you find that something is a little bit too nasal, too thick or too thin, you can change it quite easily. So what do I think about this instrument? Well, in short, I really like it. It might be the library you want to consider if you need to get yourself a Woodwinds library. But let's get a little bit more into detail what I think works and what I don't think works so well. 
Well, the first thing is to mention the Synchron player. And you might say, well, who cares? Well, it is really important because it works so well. It loads so fast, it doesn't seem to tax my system, and it's so easy to play. It's so easy to change the parameters that you want, the mix or the reverb sound. In fact, it's so good that you don't need your own reverbs. I also like the sound in general, and uh, kudos for not making me think of the facing too much because facing is notoriously difficult to get right with woodwind libraries and in this one i wasn't even bothered by it i also like the key switching system because it's consistent it's easy to remember personally i don't always work with key switches i tend to you know separate my articulations but i found that this works really well it's easy to remember and also find myself that i i like to play this it's very uh, emotional and melodic you get inspired by the instrument so what i think needs some work well there might be updates in fact so what i say now has been fixed but i think there are some consistency problems here for example i find that the shorts don't match the legatos in dynamic layers the way i work is that i use the mod wheel for my legatos and i use velocity layer for uh, my shorts and i found that even on the softest hit of the key that is still much louder than the softest dynamic layer of the legato so there are things like that and i have to tweak it i have to work with the expression in order to get it right and it's a little bit tricky to work there. Also find that the round robins and the way you smooth out a curve when you end a note is not consistent. Some of them are really good and some of them don't work as well. The fade out curve doesn't sound as nice on some instruments. So small inconsistencies and I'm really really nitpicking here. So again very easy to work with, really easy to set up, doesn't tax my system, very easy to play. I really like it so it's a recommend for sure. I really hope you enjoyed this shorter review of the Synchron Player Woodwinds. If you did like this video, perhaps hit the like button or subscribe if you want more videos like this one. I also want to mention that my patrons get access to all the MIDI files that I create for these videos. Until next time, hope you have a good time. Take care.